Hi, my name is Victor Acosta, and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Physics and Astronomy and affiliated with the Center for High Technology Materials at the University of New Mexico. I'd like to start this video by expressing my gratitude to the Arnold and Mabel Beckman Foundation for granting me with the 2017 Beckman Young Investigator Award. The award offered me the resources to focus my research on a topic that has captivated me for a long time, and also the flexibility to try out new untested directions that would ordinarily have been difficult to pursue under a typical federal grant. There are three aspects of Dr. Beckman's contributions to science and technology that I would like to highlight and show how they link to my own career. First, Dr. Beckman's inventions and products have had a major impact on everyday scientific research. The spectrophotometers and centrifuges developed by Dr. Beckman and colleagues are common in many of the research labs I've worked in. As an example, a large component of my research is the study of nanoparticles. Centrifuges are a necessary step in refining these samples, and the tools developed by Dr. Beckman carry a trusted name. Second, I'd like to highlight uh, the similarity between Dr. Beckman's early scientific progression and philosophy and my own. Following my doctoral studies, I worked in industry for five years at Hewlett Packard Laboratories and Google's Life Sciences Division, where I developed research tools that I would hope would one day be adopted by other scientists. These tools are not nearly as established as those developed by Dr. Beckman, but I feel a kindred link to his desire for precision, attention to technical detail, and eagerness to apply his skills across numerous disciplines. Finally, I'm impressed by Dr. Beckman's capacity to give back. Becoming a Beckman Young investigator instilled in me a renewed sense that I'm one of the lucky ones, and I owe it to others to give back. As a faculty member at a Hispanic serving institution, I hope to adopt Dr. Beckman's spirit for outreach in attracting students to the physical sciences and training them to make discoveries that will impact you know, the following generations. So with that, let me talk about the research that we did as part of this award. The overarching goal uh, was to make innovations in nuclear magnetic resonance or NMR spectroscopy uh, by translating it to the micro scale. So in, traditionally, uh, a nuclear magnetic resonance spectrometer consists of a large magnet and a coil used for inductive detection. It's uh, amongst the most uh, powerful spectroscopic techniques ever invented. Uh, it's been recognized for six Nobel Prizes for methods development alone, and it's a workhorse in the physical and life sciences. So uh, unfortunately, uh, the sensitivity in NMR spectroscopy often limits uh, its application uh, at the sort of micrometer or single cell scale. So what we'd hoped uh, was to develop two types of uh, different NMR spectrometers that worked at the micrometer scale. One is a NMR uh, micro on a microfluidic chip where you could picture pipetting in a small amount of sample that you're interested in, it being separated into channels on a chip and beneath each chip lives one of these sensors that I'll talk about in a few minutes, uh, which can tra uh, transduce the NMR information into the optical domain and be detected on the image sensors. The second format is something that we call an NMR microscope, where uh, similar to a normal microscope, you would put, let's say a cell culture onto a cover slip and image it with a microscope objective Except for this is a different type of microscope where actually every pixel in the image reports on the NMR spectrum of the adjacent portion of the, the sample. And this could allow you to kind of determine the molecular composition in the sample and also to watch as it's transported amongst the cells. So at the heart of our technology is something that we call diamond quantum sensors. Uh, in particular, we use something, uh, a defect in diamond that's called the nitrogen vacancy center in diamond. So, Picture the all carbon diamond lattice, remove two nearest neighbor carbon atoms, replace one with a nitrogen atom, leave the other site vacant, and you've formed a nitrogen vacancy or NV center. Turns out that we can purchase uh, treated uh, diamonds that were grown in the laboratory, uh, which have a relatively high density of these NV centers. The NV centers have uh, this remarkable atomic physics like energy level structure that allows us to detect magnetic fields and ultimately NMR spectra uh, by monitoring their energy levels optically. So uh, one of the ideas that we pursued in this project uh, was to develop something that we call pre-polarization microfluidic NMR. So basically what we do is we try to have the best of both worlds. We try to have a very sensitive device that can also operate with a very high specificity. The way we do that is that we flow analyte in a microfluidic channel uh, through a, a large magnetic field, which generates a strong polarization of the nuclear uh, spins inside of the, of the sample. And then we shuttle that sample uh, through the microfluidics 
uh, into a special detection chamber, which has a very well controlled magnetic field and allows us to very stably measure the spectrum of the analyte and allow for a, a very high specificity in order to determine you know, which of the lines in this NMR spectrum correspond to uh, which molecules. So here's a picture of uh, uh, the second generation of this uh, apparatus here. And you can see postdocs uh, Joshua Damron and Ilya Vachenko and graduate student Nate Ristoff sitting next to it. Uh, the methodology of this work uh, involves a combination of microfluidics, traditional NMR spectroscopy, uh, and uh, uh, RF and microwave engineering and optical engineering, in addition to the quantum sensing protocols. So I, I won't go into extreme detail. I'll just point out that the, uh, the sensing region, uh, uh, which we are sensitive to, corresponds to uh, about a hemisphere of a few tens of micrometers or a few tens of picoliters. So very small, kind of the size of an individual cell is what we're detecting at a time. And the way that we encode the nuclear magnetic resonance information into the fluorescence signal that's detected by these NV centers in diamond is by pulsing both radio frequency and microwave and laser light pulses onto the sample in this kind of synchronized way, which extracts the NMR uh, signatures of the sample encoded in the fluorescence. So with this detector, we were able to do for the first time uh, for us, uh, one dimensional NMR spectroscopy. Uh, and uh, we had a high enough spectral resolution. So we had a spectral resolution less than one Hertz, uh, which allowed us to measure uh, some of the smallest uh, splittings that one can find in an MR spectrum that arise due to something called J coupling. And we did that you know, on test samples of water and then also on uh, uh, fluids of trimethyl phosphate and difluorobenzene. And we're able to you know, extract uh, the unique uh, spectroscopic fingerprints of those molecules. Next, we did uh, for the first time for the quantum sensing field, as far as we are aware, a two-dimensional nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. We did kind of the simplest version called correlation spectroscopy. In the first set of experiments, we do something called homonuclear correlation spectroscopy, where we uh, apply uh, pulses just to the protons in the sample, in this case, difluorobenzene, and uh, by sweeping uh, two of the times uh, associated with the experiment, we can develop two-dimensional um, uh, Fourier transform spectrum, uh, which matches experimentally, it matches the, the density matrix simulations extremely well. In a heteronuclear COSY experiment, we replace the second pyrotupose with a pyrotupose that's resonant with the, the fluorine atoms inside of this difluorobenzene molecule. And that allows us to observe the transfer of magnetization amongst nuclei, which is a real um, a major benefit of, of this two-dimensional nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy protocol. So again, the experimental data match reasonably well with the, with the simulation. And this shows that you know, our method is able to do uh, some of the basic uh, spectroscopy uh, uh, methods that, uh, that you know, chemical and life science uh, uh, scientists uh, uh, would like to see for, for an NMR spectrometer. And it does this at the sort of single cell or picoliter limit. Well, the Beckman Young Investigator Award was also the seed for a number of other research directions. I'll just list them off here. We we're doing nano diamond super resolution microscopy. We were making metasurface optics using uh, nanostructures with titanium dioxide. We performed magnetic microscopy of the individual paramagnetic nanocrystals produced by the parasites responsible for malaria infection. And we're even building uh, magnetometers that can detect femtotesla or 10 to the minus 15 tesla uh, magnetic fields, which can be used for things like magnetoencephalography, which is the detection of magnetic fields produced by the brain. So finally, let me thank uh, my lab at, at the University of New Mexico uh, and point out uh, the key player, uh, Dr. Janis uh, Schmitz, who's now a postdoc. He started as a graduate student in the group um, and uh, point out uh, undergraduate students and uh, the seven graduate students that contributed to this work. And the collaborators, uh, Andre Armola, who's uh, the founder and CEO of ODMR Technologies, which is helping to commercialize some of this technology, and folks from sensor physics, biocrystals, metasurface optics, neuroscience, and cancer biology uh, from various institutions around the country. Thank you for your time.